Well, welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Reitz. I'm excited that you are joining us today. We believe that healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships and leadership. So whether you communicate one-on-one, -on, -one, on a team, from a stage, or from behind a screen, our communication matters. It is our currency for our leadership. And if used correctly, we will become effective, empathetic, and captivating communicators. This podcast exists to challenge you, to inspire you, to encourage you to communicate in a healthy way. And when you do, your world really will change for the better. Well, today we start a brand new series on the Speak With People podcast called Speak With Your Family. Communicating in healthy ways with your family will bring an incredible peace to your life. If your communication is off at home, it will greatly affect your communication at work. And so when you first focus on communicating with your family, it will ultimately produce a greater level of work productivity or work-life balance. And when your home life is healthy, everything else will improve from there. So today's podcast for week one of this incredible series, we are diving into the topic of marriage. Marriage is amazing, but it's also extremely difficult. In the beginning, we're trying to get to know each other. We're trying to figure each other out. We're trying to figure out how to communicate. And then the distance creeps in. And the reality is we have to communicate in our marriages. If you don't, you could lose your marriage. Well, today I have the privilege of interviewing two of my best friends, heroes, idols, best encouragers uh, I've ever had in my life. And so welcome Bob and Shelly Rates to the Speak With People podcast. Thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. Good to be here. Well, hey, I know, I know a lot about you and I know some of our listeners do, but why don't you guys share a little bit about your story? Just to give our listeners a little bit more into your life and history and maybe a glimpse of why we're talking to you about marriage. Well, we've been married uh, be 49 years, June 1st. Um, 49 years. 49 years. Uh, we've known each other 50 years. It seems like a second. <laughs> um, we... Um, had our ups and downs. Um, by the grace of God, we're still together. We met at 17. 17, yeah. Uh, married at 19. Mm -hmm. uh, almost divorced at 28. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and we're still married today. We're very happy to be. Happy yes, to have very happy. Happy to have survived <laughs> very the happy. early years. Yes. <laughs> right. Which it was, it was challenging, but, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. It made us who we are. Absolutely. 49 years. 49 years. That's incredible. Okay, so when you go, let's go back in time, way back in time, 49 years, if my math is correctly, that's sometime in the 70s, uh, <laughs> your, your first year of marriage. Good math, good math. Good yeah. math. Your first year of mar marriage. Let's go back to try to remember your communication with each other that first year of marriage. What was it like? Um, well, this is what we... We both brought the only the only example we had of communication skills between a husband and a wife was obviously our parents. Yeah. So I brought mine in, and Shelly brought hers in, and you know both sides were a little dysfunctional. So we just expected that to work in the in the dynamic of the marriage, and it it really didn't. <laughs> it was dysfunctional, I think. Early on, I expected Bob to know what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> he barely knew what he was thinking. And, and I barely knew what I was thinking. And so it, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. it was difficult. It, our ex, we, I didn't know my expectations right. of myself, of our marriage. And of, we, we just, we didn't, we didn't even know what we didn't know. Hmm. Right. Well said. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's drill into the dysfunction a little bit from, from each, uh, what you uh, grew up witnessing. You know, so mom, what was, you know, the, the communication like between your parents that you, you saw and saw how they interacted? Oh, Jason. So, you know, that, um, I was raised in an alcoholic home. Uh, my dad, uh, it was a home full of domestic violence and alcohol. My mom had serious problems because of it. We lived in downtown Detroit in poverty and um, they were, it could, you could legitimately say life was half crazy, uh, especially on the weekends, you know, Friday night yeah. to Sunday night. My mom would go to the local bar on Sunday, every Sunday night at seven o'clock and sit in the booth, phone booth, and I would sit at her feet and she would cry. She would beg her mother to let her come home. Wow. 
and my grandmother said, you made your bed, now lie in it. And then she, we would walk back home and she would cry all the way. She was very, very sad for her. They, by the time my dad died, they were married 25 years. They, at about year 18, <laughs> they, he, he quit drinking. He went to AA, cleaned wow. himself up. So for the last few years of his life, he, uh, he worked the AA program. It worked very well for him. They had a good marriage. They, they did some fun things. And then his health was bad. They were older parents to start with. Hmm. And so um, what I saw very young was an unsafe home, no communication, other than maybe yelling. Hmm. And um, it, was, it was just a difficult, yeah. difficult upbringing. So for our younger listeners, you may have heard something that was different. So your mom had to go to a restaurant bar to use the phone. <laughs> in a big phone booth with a door on it. Yes. Yeah. So you didn't yes. have a phone at home then? No, we, I, we didn't have a phone until I was 11. Wow. Now, I'm not ancient of days. Wow. That was typical of the time. Did yes. you have a wheel outside that, <laughs> that turned with a little, no, a no, little waterfall, but the, but kept the, the electricity but, going? No, and the phone, the phone in the bar, Jaeger's no. bar, the phone in the bar, um, you would have to keep putting money in because it was long distance. Wow. So right. every so many minutes, they would ask for more coin, please. Wow. Okay, so Dad, <laughs> you know, your, the communication with your parents when you were a kid. Right? Well, th- their marriage started a little rough. <laughs> um, my grandfather, who I never met, he actually died on their wedding day. So they kind of started kind of started on a little bit of a wow. downturn in the communication. That, I'm sure they communicated positively at some point, but I just remember the yelling and um, not that there wasn't good times, but you know, that's what I remember, you know, and then plus my grandmother lived with us six months and then lived with my dad's brother the other six months. So she was always in and out of our lives. And my mom didn't really care for her a whole lot. (laughs) I'm trying to be nice, (laughs) you know, but so that's what I remember. Wow. She told me once that she would take you in the bedroom closet. Your oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Sit on the floor. Yeah. And just rock and stay, to stay away from the from yep. other Yep. Wow. Wow. So when going back to then the first couple of years of your <clears throat> marriage then, when did you start to realize there was a breakdown in the communication? Between us? Yeah, between you guys. Oh, <laughs> kind of pretty immediate. Not in my ignorance of it. I mean, I'm sure... <laughs> Shelly realized that I didn't because, you know, you, you move on with life. You think you're right. You're, you're right. And I was actually kind of, I would guess I would say selfish because, you know, I started drinking at a young age they, from the people I hang around, uh, hung around with. And then, um, I got into construction and those guys were all single. So we'd work our 10, 12 hour days and then go and party all night. And, um, and, you know, the drugs came in at that point. That's where we were introduced to it. Um, and I thought life was great, <laughs> you know. And I never thought about the other side, yeah. you know, uh, the, the home life, which was selfish. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Well, we were just kids. So yeah. How, yeah. really, how could, we, yeah. how could we know anything? Although we really did, at least I did, thought we knew right. everything. But so just let me tell you, though. I loved, I loved your dad from the minute I saw him, from the moment I met him. Mm. So I loved his style. I loved that he was quiet. I loved that he was purposeful. I could feel the empathy and the caring that was underneath, although it, it took a few years maybe to develop and, you know, that we could. <laughs> Quite a few. Right. <laughs> but, hey, you know. But we liked many things about each other. Yes, yes. I, uh, I liked her smile, her intelligence. Um, um, she, she always obviously had, there was always conversation. Um, besides the obvious as a young man, you know, with what they notice, yeah. <laughs> but you know, Not that big. No, you can't, I'm just kidding. You can't so. <laughs> so you said and she always made me feel comfortable yeah. with the conversations. Yeah. Most conversations. <laughs> so mom, you said at 28, uh, near and divorce, like what, what were some of the major things that led to that or almost, almost contributed to that possible divorce? Well, the alcohol, because I had sworn as a, as a child, which is pretty typical, actually, of people that are raised in alcoholic homes to um, say, I will never, I'll never marry an alcoholic, I'll never be an alcoholic. However, um, I, he was drinking the night I met him. 
<laughs> so that's so that's yeah. kind of an, an yeah. irony there. But yeah. um, uh, I think within the first five years, we were on the road to divorce. Sure. It was, you know, I had I had you and your brother, so I had two little guys. And um, uh, I knew I couldn't bring my children up in the, the way that it was going. Yeah. And so by by the ninth year of marriage, it was, we were pretty, we, I was pretty done. I don't, I think... Honestly, I think your dad wanted to carry on. He was he was having a good time, but I was not having a good time. Right. And I wasn't innocent either in all of this, you know. So um, we we were on the road to divorce, and I I, I didn't see how it would anything would stop it. Yeah. Honestly. So at that point, did like your communication totally break down between you two? Or oh, was it, yeah. You know, oh yeah, it was yeah. it was pretty much yeah. gone. Yeah. yeah, it was gone. There, yeah. If if they were talking, it was it was yelling, it was yeah. screaming. We were yeah. Um, or me, I was the silent one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would just go into yourself and it's like, okay, I don't need this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what what toll did that take on you individually? I me, I was confused, lonely, sad, heartbroken. I wanted I thought I would be married forever. I couldn't even make it to ten years. Yeah. And um and at the same time I was mad, really mad that that this was going this way and it was like, how do we change it? How do we get out of this mess? How do we fix this? And it was, it was just, it felt desolate. Actually. Yeah, Very yeah, it really did. It was like, uh, what's the point anymore? You know, yeah. Um, yeah, it's the same thing over and over again. You know, what did you say about rehashing all the crap? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> expecting did, a different outcome. Yeah, we did the same thing every day, expecting a different outcome, and it, you know, oh, didn't didn't happen. You know, yeah, so. Yeah, it's interesting how so many couples can get to this place when communication really is a simple, it's huge. It's a really simple process, yeah. but it's so incredibly important. <clears throat> and when it breaks down, the complexities of communication are incredible. Abs so absolutely. Once it's broken down, absolutely. How do you recover from that? Yeah. Is is just incredible. So, I know a lot of people listening. They're in a place where they're trying to figure out. Okay, how is our you know our marriage is struggling? How do we you know try to figure this out? We're not talking about it. You know, so what ultimately saved you guys? So you did not get a divorce. You did not, you know, end up with that decision. So what ultimately saved your marriage? The basis. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll take part of it. You take part of it. Okay. Yeah. So Sounds through pray, praying friends, we literally were saved. So we began a faith relationship with Jesus and our marriage was saved. Mm. Our relationships were saved. Um, we, our whole, our family began to follow a different path. We began to talk openly about what had brought us to this point we were honest we went through a lot of old junk in our lives and cleared out the mm -hmm. cobwebs and um it was we were coming from a place from, of sadness and confusion yep. to a place where literally it with, was yeah within two weeks it was like okay here's your fresh start mm. starting over yep. actually starting from the beginning after nine years um yeah. I, I i always felt that god showed us how to love each sure other, absolutely how to, ourselves, how to communicate yep and when to when to talk when to be silent yep and it's still ongoing it really is yeah, <laughs> yeah. wow that's incredible yep. Yep. that's incredible to go from that place of you know almost almost being done to like you talked about yeah. just a new fresh just, start it was incredible it was. okay so what advice would you right. give a married couple right now who maybe were in the same boat they're heading towards divorce, less and less communication. They don't want to talk to each other. They're not talking about anything. When they do talk, it's arguing, it's right. boiling over, it's all those kind of things. So what advice would you guys give? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll start, yeah. I'll start with it. <laughs> so as a counselor, I would say, um, and I'm in, in both settings, in Christian counseling and in non-Christian counseling settings, uh, it's really applying First Corinthians 13. Mm. So let me let me just read that for a minute and and take this in and think about it in terms of communication and in dealing with your spouse. Love is patient. Love is kind. Does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. Not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. So I've seen it. I've seen this work. I know it's a heavy. It seems like a heavy duty calling. What do you mean putting somebody else's needs before mine? Mm. And it is a lifelong practice. Living it out doesn't just happen overnight. Mm. We got to practice it. We got to work at it. First, you get a re realization of it. Then you start listening. 
what kind of words are you using? What is your spouse, how is your spouse reacting to what you're saying? Listen to their response. If you are eliciting anger, what's the point? If you, um, so, so begin to communicate your, your love, your trust, your patience, builds relationships. It says to the other person, I trust you with my thoughts, I trust you with my care, I trust you with my heart, I believe in you. It's a lifelong journey and practice. Yep. Or <clears throat> at some point, you just got to shut up and listen. Mm. And there you have the difference. We will, we will, the difference. We will we quote the difference. that. <laughs> yeah, it's just listen. Absolutely. Listen before you respond all the time. You know. Anyways, How immediately. How do you get that place though, especially? Because I, I mean, I, I have spent a lot of time over the years talking with people who are struggling in their marriage, and both both men and women, and the men sometimes, you know, we they just get into this rut where they they can't they can't let the other like you, you gotta listen to me, you know. So how do you right. get to that place where you just listen? You have to consciously make that decision. You just do. You just like okay, take a breath. Better to have peace than strife. As you, and as the older you get, you kind of go, oh, man, do I really want to? I don't want to start an argument. I'd rather just have, have peace. Um, so take a deep breath and listen. Yeah. And, and work, work off of that. Work that into the conversation. Then, Because it, it, anger doesn't get you anywhere. Right. Nothing good happens from it. And I would say return to First Corinthians and apply the practice of putting others' needs first. Really listen yeah. to what yeah. your spouse is saying. Ask questions. Give grace always. Um, maybe take a break if you're in the middle of something heated. Come back later. Set a, a set a time. Okay, we're only going to touch this subject at this time. Yeah, we're only going to sit yep. at this yep. table yes. and talk. To this Good subject. stuff. We're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna work on it until I understand you and you understand me and we have an, an agreement on the on the topic. So and for people of faith, it's about prayer. Yeah, putting the other needs first. Why do we let so many things though become the thing? You know, I mean, I think about, you know, Tracy and I's early years and just, you know, if she vacuumed the wrong way, uh, then, then I thought she should vacuum. <laughs> it became the thing, right, right. you know, uh, or if, if I didn't put something away, it became the thing. Why do we let so many little things become the thing? Well, that's the, that's what you got to realize. <laughs> okay. In the big scope of life, are the lines lining up on the carpet? worth an argument or is it like a who really cares right <laughs> you know is that gonna ruin something or stop our communication or you know why and don't carry it with you for crying out loud <laughs> and i you would know? say what does it represent it, well, it represents yeah. the need to be put yourself first does it represent you know by saying i want you to like you're not vacuuming right because you're not doing it my way right okay really that's that's what's important we do it your way so talk about that like mm. why why is not the other way as important? And so I think it's, it's I think or, it can or, be more into selfishness. Or who is it more important to? Exactly. If it's if it's more important to for you to have the lines line up, then I mean I know Tracy. She'd probably go, okay. Right. <laughs> you know, not <laughs> why, problem. Why are, why are not a problem. It's not yeah. worth it. Yeah. 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 I know quite a few people my age and probably into their late thirties whose parents are now getting a divorce. Hmm. And have been through the divorce. They were married 35, 40 years. And then they just said, ah, it's just easier yeah. going apart. So what kind of communication practices can you put in the place or some of your thoughts on if you've been married for a, a while and it does feel like, boy, this is really dried up. You know, we don't really talk very much. Um, or it, it gets to a place where you're like, I don't even know who my spouse is anymore. Well, <laughs> communication our communication doesn't dry up. I mean, I married a wordsmith. This lady <laughs> loves words. I mean, have you seen the amount of books she has? Um, so, and she always draws me into the conversation. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's pretty much that simple. She, but she won't let me not engage. So I, I even when I want to draw back in, yeah, go sit outside, and, you know, no, nope, come on, we're having this conversation. And so I'm hopefully I've matured to that. Well, I think I have. To where, okay, let's have the conversation. You know? Yeah. So you, it's, again, it's a conscious decision. It's what do you want? I mean, it's a, it's continually strengthening your relationships. Yeah. And so, and that's what I choose. Yeah. So are you asking what advice we would give to people? Is that what yeah. the question? Yeah, someone who's been married 40 years who just are like, <clears throat> uh, 
Should we throw in the towel? I would say don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. Choose grace. Choose Choose grace. There's a reason you fell in love with each other. Remember that. Look at what you have built together. Yes. Our children, our families, just divorce. No matter, no matter how you spin it, no matter how our generation wanted to like really push it in. 70% of marriages are failing and all of that information. Divorce destroys lives. It destroys relationships. It destroys finances. It causes untoned pain and suffering. Suffering. It's a death. And it's difficult to come back from. Yeah, for people, it, it, and so always, always try again. Try, you try hard. Concentrate on you. What are you doing wrong? Don't worry about your partner. What can you do to make things better? Right, <clears throat> right. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You kind of hit on it, but how come? How come? Almost after fifty years, you can still find things to talk about. Like what? Um. Well, my notes say see prior answer. <laughs> I, I married a wordsmith, <laughs> but even though our interests have changed over the years, I mean, um, it doesn't mean we don't love each other or not interested in each other. I mean, do you really think, look at me, Jason, do you really think I love going to quilt shops? <laughs> no, I don't, but I appreciate her love of it. I appreciate that she loves the colors and how it's put together and, uh, and all I the fabrics. <laughs> Not so but much in the beginning not, years. Not so you much in the beginning like, years. Three, three leagues, leagues. Three leagues, yeah, a week. Um, but yeah, you know, so I take an interest. Now, do I help her quilt? But she'll ask me about my opinion of colors and stuff. But no, we'll go to the quilt shop. I'll do a walkthrough, go sit in the car and look at my phone. You know, but at least I made it. And she she understands that. You I do. Know, I do. You know, but I, I got to the point where I appreciated. Okay, look at the quilt, Bob. So I'm looking at all the, the colors. I'm looking at how it's put together. <laughs> okay. And from someone who built furniture, yeah. it's like, and okay, I, that's talent. And you I know. support that. So, and I, I, and so I, that's why, you know. So I, I give you patterns. You build things. I, I show you. That's right. I mean, yes. So Pictures, yeah. yes. Yep. So, I, yeah. I, I, I endorse the baseball games. I don't attend, but I endorse them. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad about them. <laughs> uh, and so... Um, I want to say that when I think about the last 50 years and how God took two messed up kids, we met at 17. It, it was we were almost 18, so then we thought we were really you we know, really we knew really everything. Had made it at 19. Didn't know a thing. <laughs> we didn't know anything. Yeah. We didn't know about life. We didn't understand. We didn't know what questions to ask. We certainly had no idea of the answers. Yeah. And um, he he has given us this wonderful family with all these yes. all this one the, this. Well, these wonderful what a blessing. People, great children, wonderful yep. grandchildren. We've had um, sorrows and we've had we've had our share. Every, everyone does, but um, we've been able to we we stay together in it. And yep. as you age, that being together from being young and and aging it matters. Yeah, yep. it didn't matter so much at twenty because honestly, at twenty sixty five, which is younger than I am right now, but sixty eight, <laughs> which is really what I am was so far away, didn't, yeah, it didn't wasn't even, even a, wasn't even a like, thought. It would be a, like a laugh, yeah, ha, ha, when we get old. And you turn around, and you're there. Mm. So make the day matter. Make, make it matter, it, yeah. Make, it, make yeah. the relationships matter. Me, say what you mean, but I would say, say what you mean kindly. Say what you mean in a way that communicates, that, that builds up the other person, mm. that... Um, uh, builds up their heart that shows your heart for them that because honestly like what is it for every negative there's you have to have five positives to even counteract that you know i meet with people every day that have been hurt by words of of parents and spouse that still it still lives in them yeah and and so yes we can apologize and i fully endorse that please apologize Admit yes. that you need to start over. But even better, consider what you're going to say and the effect that it's going to have. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, and we we don't just dwell on the past or this or that, and the, but we talk about the future, you know. Um, God promises us that our latter days will be better than a former and that with a long life, he will satisfy us. Hmm. So... And we go with that vein. That's yeah. how we how we. Yeah, we talk. We, we do talk about the past. We 
we like the same sort of the same kind of music and you know mm. we've shared a lot of different culture changes over the last 50 years we have right. lots to laugh right. about hey did you see it? and some things to be sad about and um and but it's having doing that having done that together doing that together um gives us such a like a i don't know a sense of camaraderie yeah a sense yeah. of this is this is this is kind of fun in a room where nobody else will get the joke but your spouse. Right, yeah, right, it's right. Fun. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. It's, I love it. Well, goodness, I can't thank you enough for sharing your story. For I mean, we could talk hours about you know all the things that we just covered today. Yes, we could. This is you know a shorter podcast, but before we let you go, I thought we'd ask some rapid fire questions, let our listeners kind of keep to get to know you because I know your stories kind of piqued their interest. So we'll kind of keep this going. But what's uh, right now your favorite thing currently to do together? Mine, it's it's uh, hanging out with her. It really is. Whatever. Well, we're thinking about traveling. We're we're just thinking about traveling, but we're thinking about it. <laughs> I was thinking of picking you know. up pickleball, and then there'll be the professional tour. Yeah, right. right. So when we'll she when she gets, gets it down, yes. <laughs> we have pickleball in our future. <laughs> I would love to play pickleball. I just can't. I would bend. too. I, oh, <laughs> well. Yeah, I can. Didn't I see something somewhere that you can get one for the home? I thought, well, we'll start there. We'll okay. start there. All right. And then we'll, we will, we'll A new thing for Friday night. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, and that's, uh, if you're listening, what uh, my dad just referenced, every Friday night our family does dinner together, and it's become just a great family tradition. Okay, question number two. Uh, what's your favorite movie? <clears throat> well, mine's The Natural. Mm, of course. Mine's when Peggy Sue got married. Of course. And, and I think we like them because... Uh, it's about the second chance. They're both about they, the second they're chance. They're both about mm. the second chance. She chooses to go go back in time and come back come back to this time and be married to the same person and have the same family. Yes. She yes. chooses again. And I love that. And and the natural, how is that about he, a second chance? He gets a second chance. As a young man, he was headed off to play professional baseball. He gets sidetracked a little bit, but at in his thirties he comes back and lives out his dream. We love the second yeah, chance. Yeah, that's incredible. Second chance. Uh, what's the best part of your week? Mine and now, weekends. <laughs> Starting with Friday night and then hanging out with, with Shelly all weekend. I would say I would say Friday night dinners with family, which was a great idea. People should really consider this, especially as your children and your grandchildren are getting older. Make your home open on Friday night. Have them bring the people that are with them or that they go before the – stop by before their date. Be available after. It's a good way to connect. Even when we're tired, it kind of forces yes. us to, to not forget that we're in this big relationship with each other and that it matters. Absolutely. Right. That's just incredible. Well, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this. Thank you for kicking off this brand new series. So many marriages are struggling and so much of it comes down to communication issues. Yep. And then especially yep. for leaders, so many listeners listening here, their work life is so affected yeah. because their home life is so off. Right. And if they can just get the communication right with their right, marriage, right. it's just incredible. We yeah. we dove into just a, a tiny little tiny, bit about this. Yep. In our show notes, we're going to put some resources. Uh, my mom, Shelly, is a counselor. I'm going to ask her to put together some resources if your marriage is struggling, some things to listen to, some books to read. And um, so you'll be able to have those to be able to do that. So thank you enough. Yep. Uh, I, I've told you a million yeah. times, I've said it online, <laughs> I struck the parent lottery. I don't oh. know how, oh. so I appreciate oh, it very you, much. Jay. So yeah. thank, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So thank you for being a part yep. of this Speak With yep. People. It's podcast. been fun. Yeah, remember, just don't give up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Well, again, thank you for being a part of the podcast and listening. Just want to make sure you remember a few things about Speak With People. How are you growing your personal communication skills, your public speaking, your leadership communication skills? Highly recommend coaching. A coach will give you the push that you need to, will help you figure out how to achieve the goals that you want to achieve and how to accelerate your growth. So look at speakwithpeople.com slash coaching, schedule your discovery call today. And then also, are you part of the Speak With People community? This is a Facebook group that's growing every single day. We encourage each other. We curate content. We give different ideas for healthy communication in your life and leadership. So just head to Facebook, type in Speak With People Community Group and become a part. Again, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast community. Every single 
like, download, review means the world. Thanks a ton for going to Apple and giving us a review. We appreciate it. Again, this podcast exists because our words really do matter and healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships and our leadership. So whether you communicate one-on-one on a team from a stage or from behind the screen, we hope that our time today challenged, inspired, and encouraged you to choose to communicate in healthy ways. We know your world will change for the better if you do. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We'll see you for week two when we dive into parenting. Thanks again.